Nigeria Super Falcons bring a 10-year-old jinx as they beat South Africa 1-0 on aggregate to qualify for the 2024 Olympic Games, uh, specifically the women's football event. Greetings to you. Thanks for joining us on the show tonight. I'm here, me. Adibaya. Well, it's a loaded show. We will be talking about uh, the exploits of the Super Falcons. We'll also uh, be reviewing what happened in the Nigeria Premier Football League, not forgetting the UEFA Champions League currently going on as we speak. We'll give you a slice of golf on the show. We'll also talk about the ouster of Rivers United from the CAF Confederation Cup. That's the outlook of the show tonight. Is a two-man show. My colleague Austin Okona Akwan is suited and ready as we take you on this trip across the morning spinning world of sports. It's quite a great stage to you, Yemi, and of course, everyone joining us on the show tonight. Always an action-packed world of sports right here in Europe. Big night in the UEFA Champions League. And at the Emirates Stadium, the Gunners are trailing 2-1 to Bayern Munich. But at the battle is Real Madrid 2, Manchester City 1. Half time from both centers, waiting to see what Arsenal can do. Uh, in the second half, it was Bukayo Saka that was Bukayo Saka that gave the Gunners the lead, and then Bayern Munich said, "You know what? We didn't come here to play." Now they have taken a two-one lead into the break. Let's see what happens in the second half. Big, big, fantastic story for the Super Four cause of Nigeria qualifying for the Paris Olympics. And what a story. They needed to show character against the Bayana Bayana of South Africa at the Loftus Stadium in Pretoria. And it did. It ended goalless, but by virtue of that penalty goal that uh, Rashida Adjibade scored at the first leg in Abuja, it means the Super Four cause of Nigeria have qualified I love the story so much because at a time when everyone is talking about the performance from the World Cup and they need to show their supremacy in Africa, they've done just that against an impressive South African team. I mean, I can't wait for us to talk about that one on the show tonight. All right. Uh, with us in the studio tonight, Okwemi Akiode joins us now as we take a look at everything. Okwemi, greetings to you. Thanks for finding out time to be with us on the show tonight. Yeah, interesting. And um, of course, an amazing time to talk sports. And um, big one there for the Super Falcons of Nigeria. Um, I'm so excited. I kind of felt um, we were treading on a very risky line mm -hmm. by the virtue of the slim one new victory we had in the first leg. But I also felt like, um, no disrespect to Bayana Bayana, I just had a feeling that we we're going to get the job done. And then we needed to really build up on the momentum of the last uh, you know, FIFA Women's World Cup and in Australia and New Zealand, the performance of the Super Falcons. And so uh, it's, it's even more interesting that we've not qualified for the last um, about four, Afghan, uh, four Olympics Beijing, now. Yeah. So we really needed to get into it, even though uh, you look at the group already that the Super Falcons are going to go fix into, uh, it's almost like the group of death at the, at the Olympics. But the most important thing is that we've qualified. And then, you know, we're going to have a football event at the Olympics, which is really huge for the Super Falcons. All right, it's, it's really, really huge. Um, well, it's, it was a contrast for me. I didn't like the play, but I liked the results. I mean, sometimes <laughs> you, just, you just have to pick one. And today was one of those days uh, we could all forget how they played. What really mattered is the result. And for those wondering how did it all happen, uh, let's really show that to you. I'll go across uh, the screen. Well, pictures uh, from the game. Maybe we'll talk about that a, a little before we talk about the final uh, confirmation. I didn't have any problem with the team selection. I mean, at some point, you have to allow, you have to, I mean, the man that is saddled with responsibility has to make those uh, choices. I didn't have any problem, but I, I just felt we were just too much in a hurry to get rid of the ball. That, that's the way it looked like. Well, I, I think we're really more under pressure. Uh, we understood that if you allowed uh, the Bayana Bayana to get a goal, are uh, certainly going to put us under pressure. There are quite a number of their supporters in the stadium. And, you know, they had the support as against uh, where we had to play in an empty stadium in Abuja. So we understood what we had to do. We, got, we had a couple of chances, some, you know, headed goals without so much purpose or direction. Mm -hmm. And then I think the Super Falcons just understood that get a goal, unsettle them, pin them back, get a two goals advantage. Uh, but, hey, like you said, it was a mixed feelings. We knew that don't lose, you qualify 
Score a goal gives you that balance, that assurance, that security goal, like they always call it. And then, hey, if you're not going to score, make sure you don't concede. You got to a point in the game that the Super Falcons had to defend and, you know, withstand some of the pressure the Bayana Bayana were putting forward. We'll win the ball back. We and then we'll kick it out. It There's nobody there. And we just wanted to go and we just wanted to push them away. But the most important thing is that we're going to parry, which is really, really exciting for me. All right. Uh, well, like the oldies used to say, see Paris at night. The girls will see Paris now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Austin agree with me. Uh, you know, the result is all that matters. But the, the kind of play sometimes you don't want to see. Uh, to my team, I, mean, I want to agree with you. You know, I thought the girls did just enough to handle this Bayana Bayana team. That's where trying to look for those spaces to put in the ball for, for Gatlana. Um, fantastic defender she is. Um, Osinachi O'Halley. She didn't let Gatlana breathe, you know. And if you check the way Alozier was walking in the wings, they were just waiting for that ball where they can actually do the runs and then punish the South Africans. But in this sort of game, you also want to be careful with the way you hold the ball just in case uh, you don't make errors with it. You make a faulty pass and it's just one pass to your opponent and they make another pass. And you know Gatlana in a form. Look at when Asisena came into the game. She was torturing the Super Falcons. They were trying to, you know, make the Super Falcons to commit and so they put the referee under pressure. But the Super Falcons did a great job today. Made minimal mistakes in midfield they were not losing the ball oh my goodness Deborah Abiod what can I say about her she never made a wrong pass she was very careful composed she gets the ball she's raising her head we don't even see much of that from some male players she's playing with her heads up to see who to give the ball to that's why she's not making mistakes but for some of the chances we didn't take that were created in first half the small focus should have gone 2 0, you know, up in first half, you know. Uh, but we're not here to say we didn't do well. We're here to say we know that South Africa is a dangerous team, particularly when they play at home. We know that the Bayana Bayana is not pushover, the current defending African champions. So they also wanted this ticket. And look, we, we say it, but let me say it again tonight. The space has closed. We used to say, oh, it's, it's coming close. No, 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 no space anymore. The last time the Super Falcons were at the Olympics was at Beijing 2008. It was South Africa that they defeated in two legs to qualify. First result, 5-0. Second, 1-0. Today, first leg, 1-0. Second leg, goalless. Tells you how competitive it is now. And to show you that it's so competitive, Zambia is in the mix now. Cameroon is in the mix now. Morocco it's in the, in the mix. African football is growing. It's getting better. I was just praying that they don't make mistakes today. And gracious goodness, they didn't make mistakes. And that's why I, if they weren't scoring, they ensured that they weren't considering. Shout out to Chia Makanadoze. The entire unit, they did a great job to ensure that South Africa don't make those play into the spaces. Don't make those runs. There was a time Gatlana had a chance to draw a run. And Alo, Michelle Alozier used her body so well, got in front of her, shielded the ball, and forced Gatlana to play foul. They know what these South African girls can do. They probably would say to themselves, oh, if we go score a goal now, we might just scatter everything and these guys will hit pressure on us. They weren't sure of officiating, so they said to themselves, let's keep it calm in the middle. Let's ensure they don't play their game. And if it ends goalless, off to Paris we go. The rest is history now, Yemi. All right, the rest is history. Uh, maybe we all watched a <laughs> different game. My heart <laughs> was in my mouth all to the 90 minutes. But, but again, I can accept that the rest is history. Um, let me just quickly go uh, across uh, and, you know, for uh, confirmation, uh, let's just allow you. You might be wondering, well, uh, they played the goal so what happened? Well, Austin told you the story. I'd like to repeat it again. First leg, handed 1-0. Uh, Kotsi of a goal scored by Rashida Ajibade uh, from the penalty spot in the first leg. And that is what is taking us to Paris, to the women's football event at the Olympics. So the Super Falcons qualify 1-0 on aggregate. The game ended goalless. Uh, and, of course, Nigeria broke uh, the spot. Uh, let me play devil's advocate here. Um, 
Okwemi. That performance, if it wasn't South Africa, will you be worried? If if the status quo before the game wasn't there and it was an open game, somebody had to win, would you have been satisfied with that performance? Um, I think we need to understand that um, going at those days where the Super Falcons can literally just walk over anyway. you know, teams in Africa. Yes, you look at the dominance, you look at how many players have we had won the African Football of the Year, you look at the rankings, all of those. But in terms of the unit of play, in terms of all of those balance, other teams are catching up with us. Just like Austin said, Bayana Bayana are the defending African champions, and then you look at a couple of their players that are playing top-level football for big clubs. So it's more like it's, it, it's a derby that is gradually building up. Remember what happened between the Super, Far, the Super Eagles and Bafana Bafana, the last African Cup of Nations. So it's more like, you know, like they said, Afrobeat and Amapiano coming up to play again. So it was a game that was well set up. The last time we were at the, at the Olympics, it was 6-0 on aggregates. Super Falcons against Bayana Bayana. But look at how much work Desirelli is, the, cap, the coach of the team have done over time. The Bayana Bayana have grown in leaps and bound. They can take up at the Super Falcons. They can push us to our games. And whoever we must have played, whether we play Cameroon that given us problems recently, we play uh, uh, Zambia that are also going through the ranks, or we play any of the teams from North Africa, Morocco, um, Egypt, or Tunisia, it was always going to be against the Super Falcons. No matter where you're coming from, the energy is different. When you know you're playing the Super Falcons, you want to prove to the world that you're not going to be pushed over by obviously a better team, which is the Super Falcons. So it was a well set out game, and the Super Falcons played the safety card. The most important thing is that we need to qualify. 90 minutes was between we and picking up the tickets to Paris, and we knew that if you're not going to win, don't lose. And that was exactly what we did. We literally played it safe. We could have gotten a couple of goals, especially in the first 15, 20 minutes of the game. I mean, but we knew that, oh, if the game, if the goal was not going to come, don't let us give any goal away. Let's keep it tight. And that's exactly what we did. All right. Uh, that's exactly what we did. We could go uh, on and on, talk about the Super Falcons. But uh, let's pause here and go straight to the CAF uh, Confederation Cup. That's our next uh, port of call. Uh, not a good story, um, it must be said. Not a good story for uh, Nigeria. Let's quickly uh, take a look at uh, the, the results. Uh, it's right there uh, on uh, the screen. Uh, we had our hearts in our mouths. We were worried. And um, what was on our minds happened. USM Algier needed two goals. Uh, and of course, they got those two goals. And of course, they uh, beat Nigeria's representative, Rivers United 2 1, on aggregate. Dreams FC. Play the world draw with start Malian, but they qualify 3-2 on aggregate. Uh, still some other uh, results. Zamalek played a one all draw with Future FC. They qualify 3-2 on aggregate. Ares Bakane, uh, of course, uh, uh, winning uh, Abu Salim 3-2, and of course, qualifying 3-2 on uh, aggregate. All right, let's quickly take a look at the semi-final uh, fixtures quickly. We'll come back to talk about... Uh, the results, uh, and of course, those that progress, USM Algeria will be up against RS Bekani, uh, Algeria against Morocco, that's what it is. And then of course, Zamalek will be up against Dreams FC, Egypt against Ghana. Now, I mean, let me yield to Austin, were you surprised? Uh, I I'll say the worst nightmare happened. Uh, I mean, Thunder striking the same place twice. Yeah, you know, and they did again those things that we said to them don't do, you know. We just put this game side by side with what the Super Four cons needed to do today. I'm, I'm not in any way comparing before people come for me. I'm not in any way comparing. But the, the, the assignment was go there, try and defend your goal if you're not scoring, and don't make silly mistakes. Look at the first goal scored by Abdullahi. Anon. That's him right there. The left team was a long pass, and he was just there alone with goalkeeper Abiodo Akonde, who, by the way, had, had made, I think, two saves before that goal. They left the Malian alone. Same thing with the second goal. Where were the defenders? You know, I, I don't know how to explain it, but... When you're playing this sort of game, particularly when you've got advantage from the first leg, you created a lot of chances, you didn't take them, would expect that you go out there, push, try, 
Um, maybe they were a bit unfortunate. Andy Ope came up and he gave a rocket bullet header that struck the woodwork and came out. But I think then it was already 2-0. Two, two but I'm saying to Rivers United sometimes, you just need to dare the untried. We've not beaten these guys in a while. And with TSM All Jazz, it's first time you're playing them. You've beaten them in New York. Come here now. Try and lock it up properly. They still just do this annoying, get the ball, play it long for Insima Wagwa, let Insima run, 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 run. The guy gets tired. He's tall. What about you get Bernard, get your other mid creative midfielders, go to the side, and if they can pull out the ball, Ima can jump and then maybe might just be lucky and then get a header into goal. But they just get the ball and send it to Ima and then Ima is running and these guys are not to close it down properly and they had the crowd supporting them. I, it, it, it was a game that I thought they could win, but see the goals. Just look at the goals again. You're playing this kind of game, man to man marking. Close down your man. They got their outside call right most times, but in terms of long ball, most times you also find out that USM Alger players were always free on their own. There was a time I condemned made a double save. That was him and the striker again. Kano, um, Kano had an opportunity to make it three uh, to make it a hat trick, but for the heroics of goalkeeper Abiodun Akonde. So it is what it is. I hope that they learn. Now they'll come back, face a uh, domestic assignment. When you take a look at the teams in the semi-finals, look at Dreams FC right there. Go back and look at how they started from that group. You'd be so shocked. If Rivers United had done what they needed to do, they should be the one occupying that position where Dreams FC are at the moment, Yemi. That's true. Uh, okay, I mean, a quick one before we go uh, on a break. Quickly, your thoughts. Uh, Austin contrasted what is... You know, the situation with the Super Falcons, they, need, they knew what they needed to do, and they did that. Uh, was it a bridge too far to cross? Was, was it something that was beyond them? People say it's a North African opposition. Do you, do you believe that? Um, I felt really disappointed. Let me quickly put this in. Um, I placed the wager on Revised United to qualify. Huge amount of money. It was not a bet. It was a wager with a colleague. I mean, that was how comfortable I thought Revised United should be able to pull it out. The politics of playing at the continent is different. Let us leave the whole issue of officiating, the fact that the VAR was not allowed to be used in that game, all of those, you know, back and forth just to distract the players. But at the, at the start of it, Austin talked about the fact that USM Oja had the fans supporting them. Did Rivers United have the same, um, you know, opportunity when they played at home? Imagine a club as big as Rivers United, not even having a stadium. They can call their own. They play their home games away at Uyo at the Nest of Champions. That alone affects the psychology of the players going into that game. They got into a game, a late match, that had all of the lights, all of the distraction, the noise in the stadium, the lesser light was being focused on the players. It's only normal. You use what you have to get what you want. Rivers United already made it difficult for themselves by having a slim margin into that game. You know what the Northern African teams would do. Look at the composition of the teams in the, in the semi-finals. Three of the four are from North Africa. It shows that the dominance would continue. Look at Dreams FC. A lot of people need even giving them a chance. I didn't give them a chance to come this far. I was thinking, hey, Rivers United, and when you watch that game, USM OJ had not played explosive enough in this, in this tournament. Aside the fact that they're the defending champions, they know they have to keep going, keep grinding results. All Rivers United need to do was get a go, get your midfielders to play. Rivers United were playing as if they were playing a game of rugby. No, you put the ball on the ground, utilize your pacing wingers, but they were just looking for a particular striker that was crowded by the USM OJ defense. The, I don't know. I don't know what Stanley, Stanley Guma went into that game with, but it looked like it was a defeatist mentality already. Like, hey, we cannot beat you as a right. If you couldn't get a magic, a, a, a victory that had like two, three goals in the first leg, it's almost like they went into the game defeated. As against what the Super Falcons did today, the Super Falcons know that no matter what. We had the Super Falcons. We go into it. You, you know what? Let me, let me just pause you. And I'm talking about Coach Stanley Guma. We're, we're going to listen to him after the break. He'll probably offer some explanation as to what happened uh, in that game. We're going on a break uh, right about now. But... 
Yeah, I want to congratulate uh, Usman for uh, the success today. Uh, the match has been played and won. Give them kudos. I think uh, um, we watched this game right away in Nigeria. Don't have a lot of chances and we will compete. When we here today, that's why we must be able to watch this game. We will believe and we will see, we will understand that, yeah, we had our own share of the, of the game, but we couldn't cover our chances, we lost the chances. But no matter if one, only one of people, or one or two, maybe it have made a difference. But this game of football, I also thank my players, you know, playing from the beginning to this stage of the competition. It's not easy, and coming to play against the defending champions. And they will also know that, yeah, the was United wasn't a push up by the competition. He meant it to be in this, uh, at this stage of the competition. So I think I will thank my players and thank my management, sponsors of the team. I also thank them for all the support. I hope that the team will bounce back stronger next season. Yeah, we came here to win, like I said, we didn't defend. The issue is that the game have, a, have a sessions. When you are in possession, you go to attack. When you are in loose position, you have to defend the ball. So I think uh, even if you look at what you get by the way, we had a better chance of scoring early in the game. And that shows that we went to the game, attack right from the onset. Unfortunately, we couldn't cover that chance. If I covered the early chance we got, I think uh, Usman would have done that one with pressure. So we didn't come to defend. Uh, welcome back. Uh, just listen to Coach Stanley Goma, uh, the manager of Rivers uh, United. Um, I don't know what else to say. You know, it's, I consider it an opportunity lost. Uh, but in football, I mean, it happens. A team will lose, a team will win. Uh, but for Nigeria, for Rivers United, uh, I mean, there was no better chance. Uh, just like what he said, uh, the opponents who won weren't, weren't doing much up until that point. And I don't know, it, it felt like the job was easier for them to do. Uh, well, Austin, your thoughts? We'll have to wait for another time to, <laughs> we're here to win this competition anyway. We're here to yeah. wait for another, another Nigerian team to go so far. There are definitely lessons learned that they need to go and, and activate. First things first, you need to have a home where you play football. We had Stanley Guma on this show and we asked him, and that was a question I said to him that would this result have been different with the way your team played the performances if you were playing in Port Harcourt? He said, of course, because where you play is important, particularly if you built and made it a fortress. But where you need to travel, you don't have the luxury of your fans, your opponent also knows that, yeah, they can run you, particularly where you go to a pitch that is as neutral as the Gospel Aquabi International Stadium uh, and is good for, for, for football. These, these um, North Africans, they enjoy good infrastructure in, in their region. So uh, we were lucky to even win 1-0. Uh, so I just hope that they will take it um, on board, get, fix the stadium in Port Harcourt. Rivers United is a big team now in Africa. They've been constant in, on the continent for I think in the last four years. So no more excuses when you play this sort of competition. You must show up and, and show up big time. You must show workings. You must be feared. You must be respected when you're playing. We're just talking about Dreams MC from nowhere. They're not going to be playing in the semifinals. That's good money for that team also. So with Rivers United, they just need to see what they can do now and focus on league football, see if they can make it to the continent again and make a difference somehow, some way. I said this and people are like, oh, you're supporting Red Monsters. I like the representation Red Monsters gave us when they played on the continent. And with little or zero experience on the continent, they were able to shake Rabat Casablanca. They were very close to even winning, went away and didn't lose. You know, that's, that's because of the level of the amount of work, the amount of determination, dedication that has been put into that team. So Rivers United needs to start showing work. It's not just Rivers United. Any team that qualifies for the continent now, enough of us going there to just go and add to the numbers. Let's show up and show up big time. 
All right. That's sure, that's sure, big time. Let's uh, uh, move on now and talk about the Nigeria Premier Football League. Uh, I'll just take a look at the results and yield <laughs> to Austin after the results. Um, by the way, should this start surprising a lot of people? Uh, I should say that first. Uh, but let me go across and reel out the results. Um, I can see a point being nodding his head as well. Probably agrees with me on one or two uh, of the things that I said. Uh, Carlo Pillars. I mean, we thought, the, you know, after the armoring they received from uh, Ayimba, they would, you know, tear any opponent that comes uh, to their stadium. But it happens that shooting stars were able to beat them 2-1. Heartland uh, beat Sporting Lagos 3-1. Casina United beats uh, the Flying Antelope, talking about Rangers 4-3. Quora United and Better Insurance. It was a one-all draw. Lobby Stars beat uh, the Abba Elephants, that's Ayimba, 1-0. These are the results, match day 29, results in the Nigeria Premier Football League. Niger Tornadoes hammered Gumbi United 5-0. Sunshine Stars played a 1-0 draw with Bielsa United. Remo Stars defeated Aqua United 2-1. And of course, Plateau United uh, beat Doma United 4-0. Uh, let's see if we could quickly take a look at the top four, bottom four quickly. Let's get it out of the way. There you go, Elugo Rangers uh, on top uh, with 51 points, goal difference of 14, followed by Lobby Stars after 29 matches, 51 points, goal difference of 8. Remo Stars having played 28 matches, uh, 49 points, a goal difference of plus 9. The Abba Elephants uh, bringing up the rear with trade, they, they win 48 points, a goal difference of 10. Let's look at the bottom four, where you don't want your team to be, especially at this time in the season. Well, Rivers United, 23 matches, they have a lot of catching up to do, so you would, you, you, you would, uh, you, you, I mean, you would expect them not to be here uh, in a few weeks' time if they play all their matches, so nobody will say uh, you are overconfident if you don't expect Rivers United to be here. Uh, of course, 23 matches, they have 31 points, Aqua United, uh, after 29 matches, 31 points. Heartland, after 26. Gobe United, uh, 22. It's hard to see past uh, the last two. Maybe Aqua United, maybe. But this last two, uh, I, I'm not a doomsday prophet, but I don't know. Uh, Austin, your thoughts quickly on the matches and the situation of the teams on the log. I'll definitely talk about shooting stars and that fantastic display in Kano, what a story the Olu, the Olu Yoli Warriors seem to be telling us. And by the way, they are now sixth on the log mm -hmm. uh, with 46 points. And look, when you're going this way, that game against Kano Pillars, sincerely nobody will come here and tell me that they did not write off shooting stars, particularly that Kano Pillars had suffered some level of humiliation by Aimba before that match. They got off Two minutes into the game, Rabiu Ali scored for Kano Pillars. That's a good way to start. Aside, Mesugida started believing that they will go on. They went into the break with the lead. Second half, Tayo Muritala scored for shooting stars. It became 1-1. Nine minutes, in the 90th minute, Christian Piagara, who has always showed up for shooting stars this season, scored the winner. And now, shooting stars, they can actually breathe. If they win their next game now, maybe we should be talking about the top four. You know, I told you the other time that lobby stars, they know how to win when they need to win, particularly against the big team. So I knew it was going to be a KG affair against Aimba, but 1 0 was just more than enough for them. I thought Rangers could get us talking at Katsina United, but that's a difficult ground to go. Uh, it ended 4-3, and Coach Fidelis said that Chuku said something that I like. said, it's admirable to go away and score three goals, but it is unacceptable to concede four goals, particularly when you're trying to stay relevant on the league table, when you're trying to say you can go on to contest for the league title. So uh, the, the, the flying antelopes, they really need to go back, look at that result, and say to themselves that, uh, it doesn't really do justice uh, to their league campaign. Aqua United, what else can we say? Uh, it seems they want to get relegated. So they, I just need to hurry up with that and get relegated so we know what 
we are doing. Play two United <laughs> and Doma United. Doma United, we know on a good day when they really want to play, they'll come out to play. And they showed it at Aqua United, getting their second away win of the season. But Play two United said, no, you're not going, coming here to create any upset because Aqua United came here and got us, you know, uh, biting our fingers. So they went on straight up, did a job 4-0. That's it. That's the MPFL. If you need to stay relevant, you must keep winning, I mean. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, well, uh, in a minute or two, let me get your thoughts. Uh, any of the matches surprise you? Do, do you have any of the teams? Let me start out with Do you have any of the teams probably in the top bracket or, or, or in, the, in, in, the, in the lower um, lower side of the bracket that you that you find their position surprising? Um, I think it has to be, for whatever reason. Uh, the last time we talked about Plato United here was when they won away at Niger Tornadoes by five goals to one. Now we're back again and it's four new. I think, I don't know which of the teams don't want to win the league yet. <laughs> because once you expect Lobby Stars to consolidate their position on the table, they go lose, then you expect Rangers also to be comfortable enough. I mean, I think the game of the weekend, or of, of the round, had to be the 4-3 victory for Katsina United. Well, maybe, uh, uh, you know, shooting stars, a lot of people didn't expect. Five new Canopillars got badly beat by the AIM, but you expect them to bounce back and give a good result. The Sun Avatar Stadium in Cannes is one of the most difficult places. I think... Apart from the Son of Bacha Stadium in Kano, one of the toughest places I've ever gone to watch an MPFL game had to be the Desert Warriors Stadium in Meduguri, where El Kanemi Warriors play. You go to Kano, it's, it's a very difficult place to go. And the fact that, you know, um, shooting stars had to go into that place, come from it to, it won't go down early enough, get a goal, get a win for themselves, it's a massive result. But for Katina United, to pull that huge result off, I mean, it's it's huge. But so far, so good. I, I don't know how well Aqua United want to do this, but if they are still behind, River United has six games in hand. River United have played uh, 23 games. Everybody else have played 29 games. So you can be sure that when River United come through, they can still shoot up. And look at the way the league is this season. Two points, one point. Yeah, and and, and, and let, me get you, let me get your thoughts. Um, I've, been, I've been thinking about Heartland. And I like it, Sporting Lagos uh, going there. They're not be doing well. Mm. Maybe Sporting Lagos... Uh, I, I don't know if you mm. if you thought it yes. thought about it that way uh, too, uh, but it, it didn't it didn't turn out so well. Uh, Atlan have been you know distributing points somehow, <laughs> but but they were in a generous mood that day. Yeah, I, I think um, uh, Sporting Lagos had not been good travelers, and uh, you need to really talk about that. And the fact that um, you expect them, even at home, they've not really done emphatically good at home as against, you know, how big they started the season. Although the recruitment in January had been able to give Coach Paul some level of breathing space, got some decent results at some point. I think they were as high as 13th on the log. But see, the way the teams are structured this season means that if you have a result, a win, and you don't consolidate on that win with the next result, and then you win one, you lose one, you're going down. I mean, look at Plato United as a point. They were second on the lot, then they lost at home to Aqua United, and they dropped. Now they were able to pick up another result against Doma, which is an effective funny victory, by the way. So I think this list is in, is open, and However it comes, I think the most disappointing team so far for me this season had to be Aqua United. They started so well. You know, they were flying on their way games. They were enjoying the luxury of the state-owned airline. But the results are not showing. And if you don't bring results, you cannot justify the luxury that you're enjoying. And that's exactly what Aqua United are going through right now. Okay. All right. So uh, let's just leave it at that. And... Uh... Uh, when next we're here, we'll talk more uh, about the Nigeria Premier Football League. All right, uh, let's uh, give you some golf. Let's talk about the Acropolis uh, Golf Tournament. We take you to uh, Anambra State uh, in Okija uh, to uh, be precise and talk about uh, what you have there on your screen. Uh, it's the inaugural edition of the Acropolis uh, Golf Tournament. Uh, Nigeria's number one ranked uh, golfer. Uh, Francis Ekpe uh, shot a brilliant 12 under par 60 uh, to set the course record at uh, this uh, tournament. Talk about the inaugural uh, the Acropolis uh, Golf uh, Tournament. And uh, of course, he did that in Okija, Anambra State. The event featured over 86 top professionals and amateur golfers across the country vying for honors at the 42 hectare nine hole facility. Uh, let's allow you to enjoy some highlights and take some reactions from the event. So 
you know that professional golfers in this country also house a lot of professionals from other from other parts of, uh, Niger of, of uh, from other parts of Africa. This, I would say, is one of the best we've had in in recent times. In fact, in the East, this is the best. This is an international standard. I've tested it. I've played on it. I've seen the provisions and all of the way the course is connected. For me, it's a category A. Uh, golf course and it's going to be the home of all professional golfers in this country for the tournament the organization and all that i've seen the, the hospitality this is a place to be okija is a home of hospitality it it's it reads different from what we hear or we hear all kinds of things but we have come ourselves to see and today let it make let, let, let me make it categorically clear that Okija is the home of hospitality. And when you come to Okija, don't fail to come to the Acropolis Golf and Country Club. It's a wonderful place. It's so serene. It's a place where everything is provided for, for your comfort, from, from, from the accommodation to the golf course. You can see the golf carts. You can see the serene nature of the, of the entirety. For us, as professionals, this is now our home. Um, I mean, the... Um the impact of this, you know, to um, to golfers all over Nigeria, you know, can only be um, felt if you visit this place. The topography, the topography is excellent. The, uh, the you know the the, the the scene, you know, is so appetizing and it's so relaxing that um, only when you come here that you will feel it. I mean, we are going to um, see that the support for the golfers in Nigeria and the enjoyment they are going to get playing in Okija and the Southeast you know, is, is, is going to be something that they will always remember. It's awesome. You've seen it, you complimented it, and um, I can assure you that this is just the beginning because what you've seen today is a few years of work and we're not going to put more years of hard work to, to get it you know, to, you know, to the international levels where we also will be pleased that we did something special. So this is going to be a very special you know, golf course looking forward. First, in this Akipogis golf course, they need to start an academy with the youth because academy move a lot of people like David Mark Academy. Those boys today, they are one of the best boys in the tour. So we then start the academy as early as possible now. The, the youth of Okija, they will have dream or be a good golfer. All right, welcome back. The tiny thread that runs through all of what you've heard is golf development, bringing aid to the country. Uh, in Anambra State, Okija to be precise. All right, let's go to the uh, Champions League. You have a Champions League. A lot of this happening in the Champions League. Um, at some point, I'll go across uh, to talk about the results. But okay, me quickly, we're witnessing drama. Mm. Um, at some point, you were gisting me about Manchester City uh, and Real Madrid leveled up. Same situation in, in the Arsenal game. And now you just, I mean, there's no real goal rule anymore. So, I mean, you can win anywhere. Just don't lose. That's all that matters. Just don't lose. Uh, big results, um, especially for Arsenal. Uh, this is the first time they're returning to this stage of the Champions League in about 15 years. And they really, I mean, up against Bayern. And I kept telling people, the fact that Bayern have struggled in the German Bundesliga, the fact that they are 16 points away from Bayer Leverkusen, the fact that they've lost their last two games, lost five games already this season, the first time since 2012, does not mean it's going to be easy peace for Arsenal. <laughs> you know, let me just pause you a little. It's a life situation, very fluid uh, situation. I'm going across screen, knowing fully well that this can change even while I'm speaking. <laughs> but here is the situation report just for you as we have it right now. But it's football, is life. Anything can happen. Uh, it's to all Arsenal, Bayern as we speak, uh, Real Madrid and Manchester uh, City. It is three. Three. We have our man also, Kona Akman, who's with us and is monitoring uh, what's going on. Uh, let me go to him quickly. Austin, has anything changed? Nothing has changed. It's still Arsenal 2, Bayern Munich 2, and Real Madrid 3, um, uh, Manchester City 3. But let me tell you the story. And each time I, I look at the screen showing the game, <laughs> I'm saying, yeah, we don't come yet because something <laughs> might just happen and then we might just have to change the conversation. It was Bernardo Silva, the game between Real Madrid and Manchester City. It was Bernardo Silva that gave uh, the defending champions the lead 
in just two minutes into the game, he silenced everyone at the Barnabas, but Ruben Diaz scored the own goal, and then it became 1-1. Real Madrid, through Rodrigo, scored their second goal and took a 2-1 lead into the break. Now, walk with me. Second half, 66th minute, Phil Foden scored for Manchester City. On the five minutes, City scored two goals, and then they were leading now by three goals to two. Federico Valverde said, no, this is the Barnabas. You can't come here and take all the shine. Scored a third goal for Real Madrid, and that makes it 3-3. Let's go over to the Emirates Stadium. I told you earlier that it was Bukayo Saka that gave the Gunners the lead. And then um, Bayern Munich, through former Arsenal player said Gnabry, uh, equalized in the 18th minute, and it was 1-1. Harry Kane from penalty sports in the 32nd minute made it 2-1, and that's just before halftime. So, by the Bavarians went into the break with a 2-1 lead. Second half now, man on fire. Uh, Trossard made it 2-2 for the Gunners. So, let's see if we're going to get any late drama and get a winner in both matches, you mean? All right. Uh, I'm just hoping something's going to happen. I'll see this thing change. A lot of people know where I want to see the change, but I'm not going to see anything <laughs> other than what we have on the screen. Uh, but, but uh, uh, quickly, is, is, this a, is this what you expected to like? Yeah. A flurry um, of goals. I mean, it's, it's huge. Uh, we're talking about Real Madrid, the most successful club in the Champions League history, 14 times winner. I was also looking at Manchester City, arguably the best team in Europe at the moment, defending champions, did the treble last season. They're also on course to still do the treble again this season. And then you look at Bayern, that obviously shows that they know how to maneuver the terrain of European football against newbies at Arsenal. Maybe apart from the likes of uh, maybe Jorginho, that you know won the Champions League with Chelsea, Kayava, that also scored a final Champions League goal with Chelsea. I'm not sure any of these players had been at this big stake before. So obviously they felt overwhelmed, they scored a goal, they were really at Bayern's there, but Bayern just, they stood calm, they didn't panic, and then the two goals came in, some moment of lack of concentration uh, from, from uh, Gabriel Evangelis, um, Jacob, uh, um, Jacob Kirio, both of them lost concentration, and hey, before you knew what was happening, Sanyo got the ball, and it was Serge Gnabry, another former Arsenal player, and of course you know Harry Kane's record. As a former Tottenham player, you know how many goals he scored against Arsenal. This goal tonight, it was his 15th goal from 20 matches in all competition against Arsenal. So he sure knows how to get the job done at the Emirates Stadium. So, I mean, is is we knew the games was going to have a lot of goals in them. But I'm not sure anyone expected Man City to score three goals at the Santiago Bernabeu. But it's still open. The, the gloves that have been taken from the knockout stage of the Champions League is the away goal rule. If the away goal rule was still in this one, you can almost put your money on the fact that, hey, both of the away teams that All got right. three and two goals have qualified for the next stage okay. of the Champions League. But the Allianz Arena or at the Etihad Stadium next week, a lot of things can still happen here. Man. All right. It's still game on. Uh, well, last thing I'm hoping nothing has changed. Uh, but... We got to go. Uh, we're about to wrap things up. Uh, I don't know if there's anything to report. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing has changed. Calm down. And I'm sure you just wanted me to say just to know if Asana is doing just fine. Don't worry. Breathe. All is well. <laughs> and it seems, I agree with you, Akwayabi. It seems these teams, since they know now that no away goal rule, they just open up and say, score the way you like. <laughs> I just need to come to your house and just win 1 0 and I'll ask. That's, that's the show. In London, I'm Austin O'Connor, and in everything you do, remember to keep talking sports. Bye for now. All right, this is a wrap from Lagos, but before we go, a uh, special thank you to Akwebi Akiode for his time on the show today. Thank you. Big games tonight and more big games tomorrow in the Champions League. All right, that's the show. Thanks for allowing us into your homes without knocking. It's a privilege we will never take for granted. Enjoy the holidays. you see us again tomorrow. I'm Yemi Adebayo. Bye-bye.